We're just easing into the build here. This is when it all falls apart. <laughs> Super short temper when it comes to bikes, by the way. And the color white sets me off. Ah! Cut the camera, cut a commercial. Oh, shit. It's the nightmare build! Welcome to a very fun and a little bit stressful video for me. Today, somehow I got roped into building Matt's new Trek Slash. And while it's actually not new, it has an all new paint job. It was orange. And then the good people at Fresh Paints in Whistler completely custom painted this bike that is now uh, in my hands and I need to build it. I'm not a pro builder by any means. This is not a dream build. We were actually joking earlier. This is more of a nightmare build for me. So I'm gonna take a stab at building. I've also never actually like touched a Trek Slash before or worked on one. So we'll see uh, me fumble through some things, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. A lot of the parts on this bike are from the bike already, so that's quite nice. I don't have to cut any steer tubes, but there's also some new parts going on. We are gonna start with headset bearings. We are gonna re-grease. Oh yeah, you guys know how much I love grease. Matt's actually filming this whole thing, which is, I don't understand. <laughs> I could have filmed and he could have built it, but here we are, <laughs> we're too deep into it now. So the nice thing about these frames, the bearings actually just go right in and with the grease, they will stick. Really just easing into the build here. See, just like that, it sticks, no problem. Matt is running the RockShock Zeb. You just wanna grease it like that, that's the proper form. It actually works really well. And we're just gonna go up, up, boom. And then we have, don't touch your brakes. Don't touch your brakes, top cap. That's gonna go on. Good friendly reminder. Let me know if you need a hand. No, 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 just watch me struggle. I hate being filmed doing <laughs> cable, internal cable routing, because I'm a big fan of it. And I think it is pretty easy overall, but whenever you're being filmed, the rule of thumb is stuff goes wrong. So I think I chose a bad way to do it, but I'm gonna own it. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, success. Oh wait, oh, I see. I'm fingering the wrong hole. Okay, there we go, it's right. in. SRAM codes. We are going 200 mil rotors and this very Gucci jet fuel oil slick rainbow trout bolt color, very sweet. is the way, right? That goes there. Oh, maybe it goes into this one. That would make more sense. Oh yeah, baby, okay. Then look at that, you can just, I like how it has a midway point of, of uh, inspection. Two hours later. We've gone back to zero. <laughs> I had to take out the fork there to make it a little easier to access, but that's okay. We're all learning today. I think we're at 45 minutes in, I wanna say. Maybe? And uh, we put on like a couple things. <laughs> we're gonna throw some tires on some wheels. Matt is running Bontrager SE6 front and rear. Pretty much the most aggressive trail tire they make. We're gonna try and tubeless them uh, with just a floor pump. And I remember when we made our video, how to tubeless your tires, and people saw the floor pump and they were like, that's impossible, you can't do that. I'm gonna prove it today, you can do it. We did it in the video, that wasn't like movie magic. Watch it fail though, like it could actually. I'm pumping it like terribly and it's still going up. It's just great. Oh yeah, that's good to go. Let's get the handlebar on there. 
Matt has chosen an aluminum Chromag OSX 35. Are you amazed I haven't managed to scratch your bike yet? Yeah, there is. There is. There is. We can give it a wipe down. I mean, though, with the ride wrap, like, at least I'm not smudging the paint. I'm just smudging the, the coating. All right, we're going to cut the bars. Um, I found this. It looks like an ancient pipe cutter. Uh, this should do the job. They're aluminum bars, so I'm not really too worried about it. And we are going to chop off 10 mil aside right now. I actually also have one of these at home that I stole from my woodworking class um, in grade nine. And it's still uh, cutting bars to this day. Matt is running the palm skin. Yeah, palm skin grips from Chromex. So we're just gonna slide those on. One other thing about grips and I, uh, that I like about these grips is the two bolts that you tighten are always on one side and you can set up the grip so the bolts face away. So when you're using your thumb here and stuff, it's just nice and smooth. If the bolt is there, you can kind of wear into your thumb a little bit. So it's nice they do that. We are going to cut the rear brake cable, one of the most nerve wracking parts of any bike build. Um, Cause if you get it wrong, you're, <laughs> Pretty much have to get a new brake cable. There's not too much you can do. So I like to just mock it up and see what it's gonna do in the worst case scenarios. I don't think Matt's gonna be bar spinning this bike so we can cut it fairly tight and we are just gonna not look at it cause there's gonna be fluid and boom. There we are, let's check our measurement, this looks great. Cool, so we have our cable end here and it is ready to install. We are going to gently pop off this rather nice lever plug actually. And then that just goes in there. And then this threads in. So we're gonna prep the bottom bracket area with some lubricant. Get those threads nice and juicy. So for the bottom bracket on a threaded frame like this one, uh, your drive side, this is gonna get complicated folks. Your drive side is reverse threaded, so you tighten to the left. Your uh, non-drive side is normal threaded, so you're tightening to the right. I'm actually pretty glad Matt got the ride wrap because I'm leaving my meaty paws all over this bike, but that's okay, we'll clean it up. Oh, actually you didn't even ride wrap this spot. <laughs> <laughs> also, a funny story, um, Ride Wrap was kind enough to send two boxes to Matt, one containing the frame protection and the other one contained a Smirnoff Ice. And uh, if you guys don't know that uh, when you surprise someone with a Smirnoff Ice, it's called an icing or an ice, and they have to immediately get down on one knee and drink it, which I think Matt did. This video of it. Roll the, roll the tape. What a bad experience. So bottom bracket is now installed. We are ready for cranks. I'm gonna go get those. And this one you actually do wanna grease pretty well. The torque is, let's see, 54. Yeah, so really friggin' tight. Oh, f you have a chain guide. A little longer than a few minutes later. Uh, the nightmare build continues. I forgot to put on the chain guide. So to save you guys some pain, I have put on the chain guide and I'm gonna just reinstall the cranks that I was so proud of uh, not screwing up. All right, Matt is running an X01 axis derailleur, 12 speed, brand spanking new. So we are going to sync it up to the shifter here. This guy, oh, battery's almost dead, that's good. Um, press and hold that. Press and hold this. I think we're good. It's like magic, people. It's working. Let's line this up. Oh, baby, look, it's almost looking like a bike now. 
All right, so now we're gonna size up the chain, uh, which is very similar to the brake line. You can screw this up and uh, I'm not gonna say you need a new chain, but it, you could need a new chain. Add three, is it? I gotta look at a video. <laughs> I gotta meet this guy one day, the guy who narrates the Stram videos, because I've heard his voice so much. I've watched these so many times. I've measured one outer link, one inner link, and we're gonna punch it out and see what happens. The, if you're not sure, the best thing to do would be leave the chain longer than you think, and you can always take a link out later. And let's pedal. Probably gonna make some bad sounds because nothing's set up. So this is the nightmare build after all, and then Murphy's Law is in full effect. I have successfully routed the chain incorrectly, and it is going around the back of the cage. Uh, not a huge issue really. I can just take the master link off and and redo it. But I was I was kind of pedaling the chain there. I was like, hmm, something's making an odd noise, and uh, it happens. It happens. So we're just gonna not get hit in the eye by that. There we go. Now it doesn't make a horrible noise when you pedal. What I like to do first is set my high and low limit screws. Basically limits how far the derailleur can go either into the wheel or into the frame. And you want to make sure that doesn't happen. So there's two screws here. So right now with the derailleur in the high position, we are going to snug up the high limit screw until it touches. There's a little piece down here. And you just want to make sure it touches and then you want to back it out like a quarter of a turn so while we're back here we are also going to align the brake and the easiest way to get started is the old classic you pull the lever while the bolts are kind of loose you see where it sits and then you just want to tighten the caliper gently not the full torque and see where it gets you. Sometimes this aligns it perfectly first try. Um, yeah, we're actually really close to that. <laughs> Crucially important step here. Mahalo my dude mudguard. That's going on before the wheel goes on. Get yours at mahalomydude.com. But in all seriousness, it is way easier to install if the wheel's off. I like to do the zap straps in the middle first and I put them here, I'll, I'll even give you a little, I put, I thread them kind of, so when it loops around the fork arch, the, um, what do you call it? I mean, the receiver on the zap strap is going to be hidden underneath and not kind of like up here, all, all janky looking. Ready to put on the front wheel now. So let's grab this axle out of here. Yum, yum, yum. Oh yeah. Matt's got some gold chrome egg scarab pedals going on this bad boy. We are gonna grease those axles. Ugh. All right. Pedals on baby. And then we're just gonna do the drop. Again. So that actually requires it coming over the stand. And it's the final process that if you screw up, it really sucks. And I'm gonna just leave if, if I manage to screw it up. Okay, we got our fail there, perfect. We got this here, perfect. Oh, I hope it didn't screw up. <laughs> we'll find out now. And then we kinda wanna keep pressure on the cable as you go down. I'm just gonna put it at the lowest there. All right, we have ourselves a bike. Matt has a brand new bike and it is pretty much ready to shred. It is 3 a.m. Just kidding, it's it's 9.45. It didn't take that long, but I think we're at three hours and 45 minutes, which for a full bike build I'm uh, and filming, it's, it's fine. So we gotta give a big thank you to Trek, Bontrager, Chromeg, SRAM RockShock, and as well the good people at Fresh Paints for custom painting this frame. It came out amazing. Let us know what you think below. We're gonna head into the forest on a nicer day, collect some beauty shots, and then you're gonna see Matt shred this thing in some future videos. So make sure you subscribe. And hey, if you like some of the graphics on this bike, like this bear here, there's some hits over here, 
Make sure to buy the VHS sticker pack on our website as well as the mud guard. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the bike build. Stay tuned. Maybe maybe we'll do it again. I don't know. Not for a while though. I'm, I'm freaking tired. I want to go home. Can we go? Can we, can we leave? Can I leave? Your bike is built. What do you want? What do you want from me? Uh, you can talk about the missing bits. No!